Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we answer the age old question. Do you have to get a resin printer to be able to achieve top quality results? Or can you get that with an FDM machine? Before we get started, roll those credits. So, okay, we have printed two lightsabers, Mace Windows and General Grievous. Now, most people will, of, will often say that if you want to get top quality results, top quality surface finish, top quality, you have to get a resin printer and you have to print your things in resin. Now, there are some problems with that. One, resin is significantly more expensive to buy, roughly double the cost per kilo of FDM, and resin printers are sometimes quite limited in size, where you can go and pick up a Sidewinder X1, for example, or their new X2, for around 400 pounds, and that will get you a 300 by 300 by 400 build volume. You'd have to go to something like a frozen, mega 8k at about 2500 pounds to get a still smaller build volume than that so we pitched the two best printers we have against each other we pitched the frozen mega 8k against the bamboo carbon x1 the 8k was printing at a 0 0.05 layer height and the X1 Carbon, believe it or not, was printing at a 0.08 layer height. Now, let's just be clear. There are some very obvious things straight out of the gate. This was considerably quicker than this one was. And um, the X1 took about six hours to print all of this. This was printed in sections, they both were. Um, and, uh, and ultimately this took about three hours to print, so around half the print time. However, this is done in PLA and this is done in resins. So this is nearly half the cost. So before we stick any primer on these, let's take a quick look at what we're looking at with raw prints coming off the machine. Okay, so let's start with the General Grievous lightsaber. Unfortunately, I have had a little bit of overspray on this where it's been sitting on my painting desk and a little bit of blue went on the, a uh, little bit of blue overspray ended up going on it. But we're gonna prime this anyway, so that doesn't really matter. You can see that we've got almost no surface scarring from supports. This is incredibly smooth. It's done the circle perfectly. Everything went together really, really nicely. Super, super nice. And then we have the Mace Windu uh, lightsaber as well. Both of these models are from the Star Wars Patreon that uh, is part of the Wicked group. Absolutely stunning, went together really nicely. The one caveat I will make is that where you have significant overhangs, there is a level of support scarring on these. But surface texture wise, you can see there that this again has a beautiful shine to it. You've got all of the embossing there that came out really, really nicely as well. Um, really, really nice models, but also absolutely beautiful finishes. So as you can see on the face of it, there really actually isn't that much difference in surface quality, but you're not just gonna print them like this, you're gonna to want to paint them. So, first and foremost, let's get a primer on these prints. And we're back. So, I've had a slight wardrobe change because I had to wait for these to dry, um, but now that these are primed, I can honestly say I am really, really impressed with how well FDM stacked up against the resin side of this. So let's go in nice and close and we'll take a look at the quality difference. Okay, so first and foremost, we have the FDM model here. So as you can see, this has come out 
really, really beautifully. I want to reiterate that this was done on the Bamboo Labs X1 and it was done at a 0.08 layer height. Now, it isn't perfect. So if we start to look in here at some of the, uh, at some of the overhangs and where we had support interface, so like the underneath of this button here, you can start to see some of the minor flaws that have come out with this. Um, there's some parts here where, again, we've had a little bit of support scarring and the same on the surface there. But overall, this is very, very nice. However, we come to the resin model. The resin model is stunning. Frankly, I mean, there's just, there's just nothing to pick apart on this. There is, there is nothing to, there's nothing to say, oh, you know, we've got some, we've got some very, very, very minor pitting just underneath some of these overhangs here. And if you just pass a bit of sandpaper over that or a file, that will knock that straight off. There's a reality that I thought this was going to be much more of a stark difference between the two. But I think if you actually look at the two of these, they're very, very comparable. So the resin model was done on the uh, Frozen Mega 8K and this was done on the, uh, on, on the Bamboo Carbon. Um, the, the resin model was at a 0.05 layer height and the layer height on, the, on this one was 0.08. I don't think there is that much difference between the surface finish of these two once you put a primer on them. Um, there is ever so slightly a little bit of Z-banding right up here. I don't know if you can see it when I get in the light, but frankly, they are way closer than I ever expected them to be. So, what are the results, really? I mean, look, you guys can judge for yourselves. Ultimately, when it comes to overhangs and support interface layers, you just can't beat resin when it comes to that. The way that we're trying to, the way that I'm trying to think of this is think of it like, think of it like flying. FDM printing is like a budget airline. It gets you where you need to go. It's perhaps a little bit more aggro than it needs to be, but it will get you there right it's cheap it's reliable you're able to you're, you know you're able to get the results that you need it just may not be that premium experience resin is a little bit more like owning your own jet you get fantastic results those results are always consistent but it's quite a bit more work than just flying commercial right it's 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 so much more effort involved in doing this so there is the cleaning there's the maintenance there's the fact that if you're using msla which we are you know your screen will only last 2000 hours and then you've got a bill coming along to do that i have over 10000 hours on my sidewinder x1 i've got a good few thousand hours on the uh, on the bamboo carbon at this point um, and so far i haven't really had to do any maintenance to either of those once I get to two to 3,000 hours on the M3 Max, I will have to buy another screen, and that will be a 300 pound bill for me. And I will have to replace the FEP at some point. I will have to continue to buy IPA as well as buying resin. Resin is double the cost of FDM. So it, it's really, really hard to say which one is better and which one isn't. I think they both have pluses and minuses. Um, I'm surprised at how well this did come out in the end, because frankly, I was thinking the quality on this was just gonna blow it away. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to what you guys need to do. It comes, down to, it comes down to how you want your prints to come out and the kind of effects that you want, whether or not you're happy with, you know, with, uh, with, with a few layer lines, with a bit of imperfection. You know, we're not doing we're not doing screen quality props at this point. Um, you probably could do, to be fair, with a little bit of extra sanding and a little bit of attention to detail. You probably could do some so, sort of something that would actually get you to a pretty a pretty high level. Um, resin is just that little bit easier to get that high quality finish, but it's still going to come down to your paint job. It's still going to come down to how you finish this model and how you present it and everything else. Ultimately, these are tools for different jobs. 
in my opinion. If you want to do large stuff, frankly, FDM is probably going to be a better bet for you. If you're new to the hobby, FDM is going to be a little bit easier for you to get into. If what you're looking to do is highly detailed miniatures or highly detailed props that aren't, you know, that aren't things like the giant axe from, um, from God of War, then resin printing may be the way for you to go. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to be a little bit more messy. But ultimately, I like having both. I like having a blended approach. Um, we recently did the Aquaman model and the fact that that's part FDM and part resin, I think works really well together. I think it gives you more flexibility and I don't want to put myself into a box where I only get to do things in resin anymore. So that's it. I don't really think it's much of a surprising result, I suppose. It's horses for courses, tools for a job. That being said, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for checking out. Let us know in the comments what, which one you think is better and some, of the, and some of the experiences you've had with FDM and resin as well. Catch us on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.